Hey everybody, Sam Mutari here, and welcome back to another um, playthrough of Guild Wars. Another part of the playthrough, I should say. Sorry, I just got back from work. So, um, anyways, we're back on Arcus Sphere. I don't know how many of you saw my previous Guild Wars video. Um, it was me and my best friend uh, playing around in Krida on my main account. Oh, I have to update this. Um, ev eventually I will. Anyways, um... My girlfriend is coming over <laughs> this weekend, so I wanted to go ahead and get a quick video in. So I promised everybody that we'd go into the uh, catacombs and do some of the um, quests in the catacombs, especially since we have our monk powers, and that'll be really helpful considering we'll be fighting undead. So we'll just run through some of these real quick. Uh, I'm going to try and not record for too long because I have things I have to do, but you know. Let's see if Mune's back there. She's still here. She's got to show us where everything is. The Necromancer's novice. Always remember a Necromancer's strength and other's weakness. Use your summon minions. Blah, 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 blah. Fight the nightmare that basically she had a really, really um, weak... Yeah, follow me. I'll show you where the last novice died. Yeah, basically she was training a Necromancer who then summoned a nightmare he couldn't control. And, um, yeah. So, I don't know why I haven't summoned my thingy yet. Uh, I still didn't give Gwen her flute either. So I basically already know where this is. I'm not really worried about it. And these things are going to go down pretty quickly since we do have holy powers. Um, holy powers. The catacombs are actually really confusing. There's like four different entrances to the catacombs. I don't know if I um, told you this or not. I think I did. But basically, yeah, there are, um, there are a lot of different entrances to the catacombs, each one leading to a different section. Um, dedicated to a different type of monster, <laughs> basically. It's not really dedicated to that monster, but it just so happens that every entrance has a different monster that shows up, I guess. So, like, you'll go into one entrance, there'll be gargoyles, you'll go into another entrance, there'll be devourers, go into another entrance, there's spiders, and then you go into this entrance, and there's a whole bunch of undead. The catacombs are really cool, because I find that the catacombs are some of the- is one of the most unique areas in this game, other than, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to say Wizard's Wayford, and it's not, um, uh, it's not Wayward Wizard, that's the actual quest. Foible's Fair, uh, fo the area of Foible's Fair and the, uh, basically the Wizard's Tower and all that, uh, that's some of the most unique areas I've seen here in the Guild Wars universe. But, yeah, the catacombs is definitely one of my favorites. Hey, are you, here we are, are you ready? blah 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 So, the only problem with this right here is I'm not sure if she gives us the power yet, but basically, we have to find a way to get around these fire traps, which are set up in the catacombs. Not sure why there are fire traps, but there are. Do we have this? Yes, we have an animate bone horror. Good. Alright. So, she, are you going to say anything? Or are you just going to let me go? Obviously. Okay, yeah, she's just... Okay, I don't know if you saw that or not, but yeah, there was a fire trap there, and the devourer basically walked and committed suicide. And now he's going to go down here, and he's just going to wait like a dumbass. Go ahead. Carry on, devourer. So basically, you'll see you'll see a fire trap because I'm gonna have to um, create a bone minion in order to set one off. Where is it? It's right down here. So we're gonna animate a bone horror. Hopefully, we're close enough. Yeah, he's gonna spawn from that corpse. So bone horrors can only spawn from corpses, obviously. So I could make another one out of this one. But, uh, but yeah, so bone horrors can only be animated via corpses. We have another flame geyser over here. I really wish I could, like, get that nightmare to come over to me, but I can't. So we're gonna animate another bone horror, which will destroy himself. And then we're gonna fight this tomb nightmare. But like I said before, the catacombs in itself is, I think, a very, very unique area of space. Flat bow. Um, obviously this is clear water that you can actually go into, but I mean, literally, just look at this place. Like, it's gorgeous. I mean, other than the fact that there's death everywhere and those are vultures, but I mean, seriously, like, the stained glass windows, just the fact that this is, it looks like an underground cathedral. You have the geysers here, 
um, you know, the fire traps, and just the fact that every, it has, like, four different entrances, each one leading to something different, you know, like, that, this is what I believe makes a, a, a good game, you know, I'm gonna go ahead, yeah, I saved a screenshot, I'm lame like that, but yeah, like, this to me is what makes a good game, just unique areas that you can basically look at and be like, oh my god, this is, this is amazing, this is brilliant, so, look at how handsome he is, I don't know if I stress the point of this to you, but it is really, really hard to make a handsome necromancer, and so I'm actually pretty damn proud of myself that I <laughs> managed to accomplish this feat. Okay, so obviously our only goal was to, um, kill the Tomb Nightmare, and now we can head back. This is a dragon? I believe it is a dragon. Like, see, it's just, I love this. It's, it's just simple things like this, which makes me appreciate the older games. Because, I mean, Guild Wars 2 is very beautiful, and every place is unique and different. But, um, you gotta think, back when I was little, like, this game was the shit. Because of these things that other video games didn't have. If you didn't notice, that was the novice that got herself killed. So. I could spawn a bone horror out of her corpse, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna respect the dead. Hey, I did your thingy. Most impressive, you dispatched that nightmare rather quickly. You show some real talent for the work. Thanks. Ooh, we level up. We're not level four. Spend a tribute points. Ear. I still don't have enough to do my death magic, but that's okay, because I don't really use death magic that much. I'm more into the blood magic, the whole soul sapping shit. See? This is Grenth, by the way. This um, Each profession has a god that you basically worship. Um, the old gods, the six gods. So, so yeah, so each, each thing has a, these, uh, blah, blah, each profession has a god. The, I might need these skeletal limbs, so I'm gonna go ahead and collect them. But the, um, what was I gonna say? The Mesmers have Lissa, which is the two-faced. She's not really two-faced. I mean, she has two faces, but she's not, like, two-faced, as in she's gonna say something nice to you and then stab you in the back. She's not, like, a high school girl. No, like, two-faced, as in she literally has two faces. Um, and she's the goddess of, of the Mesmers. Then you have Melandru, which runs the rangers. Melandru is, like, basically part tree. And then, then you have Duena, which is for the monks, even though Duena is kind of, like, the universal goddess of, um basically holiness. Um, everybody worships Duena. Um, yeah, yeah, that's actually true. So everybody worships Duena, and then you have, um, and everybody fears Grenth, because Grenth is basically the devil, Duena is basically God. Um, so the monks have Duena, the necromancers have Grenth, Mesmers have Lissa, rangers have Melandru, warriors have, fuck, what is his name? I'll think of it later. Balthazar. Yeah, Balthazar. And then, yeah, I think that's that's all of them, right? So, um, if you don't remember, uh, we had this quest called the, the Path to Remembrance or whatever? What is it called? Rites of Remembrance, yeah, basically. And so we have these candles in our inventory, and there's four of them, and we have to place them in these braziers to honor these um, dead soldiers, th these restless spirits. And he's like, oh my god, a candle! Hi. I was gonna bow to you. Hey, you. You. Because, like, sometimes these dudes bow back. But I guess he's not wanting to stay and talk. Whatever. I just lit your candle. This right here, this is Melandru, by the way. I'm pretty sure that's Melandru. I don't think it's Duena. Pile of glittering dust. I don't know why I'm wasting this, considering it doesn't really do shit for me, but... Life's a fun. Thank you. So I'm collecting these skeletal limbs, because I believe I need a good number of them. I'm gonna go ahead and heal myself, like, a lot. I wish that skeleton guy would come over here, because once I get in this water, of course, it's diseased. 
and so it's going to start draining my health. And so usually what you want to try and do is you want to try and uh, stay out of the water <laughs> as much as possible, because obviously you can't walk and cast spells at the same time, which gets pretty damn annoying. Yes. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Or... Restless corpse. Hey, skeleton dude, come help me. Thanks. Sometimes the skeletons will come and not the skeletons, the uh, ghost dudes, they will actually come and fight for you, which is always really nice. You have a candlestick here, right? Oh, it's over here. Okay. Now you got your candlestick, and then your candlestick's over here. And then we're going to run our ass off of those stairs so we can get out of this water. So now that we've completed that, we have to go back to Mewn. So you see these um, these quests in pre-searing, they're not really hard. They're not they're not difficult at all. Yes, this is Duena. Ooh, so that's Duena. And the one that we saw before, the girl, that was Melandru. Duena has wings, Melandru's part of trees, Alyssa will always have a purple background. Is there a thing to Melandru here? No, but there is a Grenth statue. See, I'm always discovering new things. Like, no matter how often I play, I am always discovering new things, which I love. Uh, I know, I'm, I'm one of those... Things. Now, the cool thing- oh shit, 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 didn't want to do that. So the cool thing about these, um, these statues, which it doesn't have a nameplate, but it would say Statue of Grenth. The cool thing about these statues is that whenever you- I think it's kneel? It's either kneel, bow, or pray, but it's one of these things where if you kneel or you pray in front of one of these statues later on in post-searing, um, so I don't think you have pray. No. So yeah, it's kneel. But whenever you kneel in front of one of these statues in post searing, the spirit, or basically the uh, guardian of that statue, the vo it's called the voice. So the voice of Grant, the voice of Melandre, or whatever, um, they will actually appear uh, in front of you, and you can buy um, blessings from them. So if your morale is down because you have the death penalty, or something like that, then you can basically bow in front of one of those statues. Um, I don't think it has to be of your corresponding god, but I think that's more helpful if it is. But uh, but yeah, then you can buy like basically power-ups where you can um, decrease the, the penalty from dying, or you can um, boost your strength, or just... There's all sorts of things you can do, so... Which is pretty cool. Okay, so now that we completed this, we have to go back to Mewn. Now, normally Mewn would be back um, where we originally found her, inside her little temple thingy doodad. But because we did the Apprentice quest first, she's actually going to be back where the Apprentice was, because she has not moved. See? Isn't that just the coolest? I'm going to be admiring the catacombs all day. So, so while I do love the catacombs, and I do think it is one of the more unique places within the game, I do hate the catacombs. I hate, like, all the quests you have to do in the catacombs, because, like I said, it just it takes a long time, especially as a necromancer. Um, you have a harder time in the catacombs because you spend most of your time there. Now, like I said, each class has quests that are specific to their class, so obviously necromancers are going to have a lot of necromance quests, necromancy based quests and so yeah you spend a lot of time in the catacombs doing chores for Mune and her sister and etc. Hi I did your thingy. Appeasing the spirits wasn't so difficult was it? Blah 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 you got a grim cesta. I didn't mean to click away from it that much but so now the only thing we have to do is we have to find the prize moa bird and head to the catacombs and find Pitney's prize bird. Now, the only problem with that is that I do... Hmm, how do I explain this? There is a way to find the bird. From here. Um, there is a way to find the bird. But I'm not really sure on how. Shit. Crip spider. Hate you. I hate you. If you're arachnophobic, I already apologize. The catacombs are full of spiders. 
And if we get to the gargoyle place, then I'm going to collect some gargoyle skulls. Stop. Okay, yeah, spider legs. Ooh, maybe I should have this up. This will help. But yeah, always whenever you're going into the catacombs, always make sure that you have a secondary profession equipped. I mean, it comes in handy, because obviously if I didn't have it, I'd be limited to like four powers, which I don't like. This game already does not give you very many slots. Um, but yeah, like power slots and whatever, you know how with WoW you have like 20 bazillion slots you can use for powers? Yeah, no. In Guild Wars you are just limited to these eight, and you will always just have these eight. Do -do -do -do. The reason why I have this mini uh, map open, this little mini thingy magic, um, the reason I have it open is because uh, it'll tell me where the collectors are. I know that one collects spider legs, I know the other one collects skeletal limbs, I know that there's one that collects gargoyle um, skulls, and I'm trying to get new armor so I can show you what the Crichton armor looks like, and I can show you the difference between the two. I'm impressed by how much experience I'm getting with this. Now, there are titles in this game, like if you, uh, there are achievements for doing certain things. I know one is their survival title. Um, me and my friend at work, um, Ute, we've been uh, talking about it. And uh, so, but the survivor title, I forget how many, or how much experience you have to get, but orange dye. Cool. Shit. I need to get rid of some stuff. I'm gonna, yeah, this didn't cost me very much, so I'm just gonna get another one. I'm gonna pick up you, though. And I'm gonna drop you, but I'll pick you back up here in a minute, because I need to get rid of some stuff. Like you, and like you, and like you. Anything else? I like you. Anything else? Oh, this is gonna be a problem. So, so I don't have my, um, my, I don't have a belt thing. -y. Yeah, so I don't have a, a belt thingy. And this is gonna be a problem because, or belt pouch, because I don't have as much inventory space as I should. Uh, another reason why I just wanna find a collector and figure out what they're collecting. Actually, no, the one that collects spider legs is like all the way in Regent Valley. Uh, and this is a salvage item and I don't have anything to salvage it with because I just got rid of my salvage thing. And this is why the catacombs are very complicated. Screw you. And your spider mom. You know what, since you're having so much fun hitting me, I'm just gonna suck your life out, you know, nothing serious. Oh, God, more spider legs. I only think I need like five. There are uni universal places where you can get, um, basically, equipment. Um, I didn't, where are you going, Arcus? Ugh. There are universal, um, areas where armor is given. Um, the spider legs in Regent Valley is one of them. I should have gone the other way. I'm paying attention to this mini map, and I already know what freaking where freaking the uh, thingy is, where the bird is. But you know, I don't even think that you can map travel when you're in the catacombs. I think you literally have to find an exit before you can, um, before you can actually um, teleport out of the catacombs. I think that's another thing I hate about the catacombs, if it's true, but I don't really remember. Oh. Okay. So this wasn't really as hard as I thought it was going to be to find. Like I said, I always take a, a different exit to get here. And then after this quest, we're going to go to Pitney. I'm just going to sell some things, yada, yada, yada. Oh, shit. Okay, so this is going to be a problem. Kill it. Okay. Me. I wish I could freaking 
heal the skeletons. I'll let my imp deal with them if they come near me. Okay, so we have officially made it to the area where the moa bird is. And there it is. It's a corpse. Someone has used it in a devilish sacrifice. Hold on. So technically, whenever you see the moa bird, the, um, the, um, the deal is, the deal is sealed. <laughs> Your objective is complete. You don't really have to do anything else. All you have to do is see the corpse, and so you could technically run from these guys if you chose to. But what's the point? You know, you might as well fight them, get the experience. That poor moa bird. The thing is, is, like, moa birds remind me of chocobos. It's dead. Um... But yeah, so it was used in some sort of sacrifice. I don't think it's really ever explained who did the sacrificing. I'm not really sure. See, look how evil I look. Isn't that fantastic? Screenshot time. <laughs> I am so lame. I don't know. I don't know why. Oh shit! I did it again. I don't know why. I'm just in one of those moods after work. So anyway, so now that we have all that done, we're gonna go ahead and go back to Ashford Abbey and see if it'll let us travel. It will. Fantastic. And then Pitney's, of course, in his field, so there's really nothing to fret about there. Well, she's wearing a pretty dress. She's level 18. See, the thing is, is there is a way to get to level 20 here, but it's a really complicated process. I know that I looked it up once because I was like, man, I would really like to, you know, do that myself. You know, get to level whatever, whatever, and <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Your inventory cannot hold that many items. Oh, that's right. So the rule is sell blue items, keep white items to salvage. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get the salvage kit. I wish we could buy two of them, but we can't because they each take up a space. We're going to get rid of the dull carapaces. Oh, shit, I forgot. Okay, so anything that I drop will get destroyed because it's in a town. Well, I can't drop it, so I can throw it away. Yes. Um, whenever you want to salvage something, you always have to have one space in your inventory. And my dumbass totally forgot this, as usual. So, there is a skeletal limb collector. I know this for a fact. I don't know how many he needs. And I have six scale fins. So after we see Pitney, I think I'm going to go buy a belt pouch. So I can store more items. I want to get armor as soon as possible. Oh, and we can also get rid of this devourer egg by giving it to, to the dude that owned the um, the bull that we killed in part uh, in part three. Where's Pitney? 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 Oh, he's not in his field anymore. Duh. Pitney! God, I gotta go all the way around to get Pitney. Tell him about his damn bird. Hey, dude, your bird was used in a devilish sacrifice. I am Captain Kirk. The bird is dead. Cube in a devilish sacrifice. So I guess there's also, like, a quest that's not really a quest, but if you herd, like, all of these hogs into the pen, I think he gives you something. But the thing is, is like, it's not an official quest. It's one of those things that you kind of got to do on accident and then be like, oh, okay. Thank you. Now, I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do for next episode. Like, I would love to cover the bandit stuff, but that stuff's pretty ho uh, hard horde. Huh? My bird dead. Shit, I didn't read that again. Sorry. It's just, I'm so used to just mm, clicking this. I'm not... Mm. Okay, so I'm going to fast travel to Ascalon, and this is going to, like, lag like hell. So I guess it's Breast Cancer Awareness Week, which means there's a girl in town selling pink dye. Now, I would love to uh, have a pink uh, necromancer, let me tell you, but, uh, no, not really, I would hate that. But, yeah, so there's a girl that is selling pink dye here. I'm not really sure where she's located. She's probably located where they um, have all of those... Um, costume people that I showed you in, like, the second, first or second part. Havers, Dan, what do you want? 
To learn more about being a necromancer, including how to animate the dead, you should talk to the necromancer Mewn in the catacombs. To reach the catacombs, follow the road southwest from town. But I already talked to her. But I already talked to her. Oh, right. So we have to go talk to her again. Yeah, there's old Mac. Okay, this is who we need to talk to. But I want to have I want to show you this conversation so you kind of get the gist of what's going on here. And he's going to go yell at Althea. I love how he's called old Mac, but if you look at him, he's like fucking ripped. He's not even old. And then you see him later on, like 7 years later. See here, miss, I understand you're responsible for what happened to my poor Bill. Bill the Bull, lady, you had him killed, and I demand recompense. You must be mistaken. I know no Bill. Yeah, you heard me the last- you're, You've not heard the last of this. I'll get what's coming to you. I'll shut you down, I will. I think not, sir. Your poor Bill was loose and attacking citizens in the Ashward Road. He was put down, and rightly so. Perhaps you'll keep a closer eye on your livestock in the future. So he's gonna walk away. He's gonna walk all the way down this road. I'm gonna chase after him. Hey! You, you're the one who killed my bull, Bill. T'was Althea's bidding, sure, but that's not to me. If you and that Althea woman won't compensate me, I'll take my case to the constabulary, and I'll get satisfaction. That bull protected my farm for all these years. Who will protect it now, hmm? You know what might do the trick? A devourer might, if I could raise it from a hatchling and train it myself. Tell you what, you bring me a devourer egg, and we'll call it even. What do you say? You got a deal. So... He wants his devourer egg. So basically, we went and we killed his bull, which was supposedly protecting his farm, but it wasn't doing a very good job. And, yeah. Because it was attacking people that weren't even coming to his farm. And so basically, yeah. Stop walking. Oh, that's lovely. A devourer all my own. I think I'll call him Joe. Come, Joe. Let's get you someplace warm and dry. Shh, there's a good egg. Fucking weirdo. Okay, so now we've finally gotten rid of that last devourer egg, and now we're gonna go to him, because he collects scale fins, I do believe. And he should have a belt pouch. Yep, he does. Exchange. Goodbye. Inventory. So now we have a belt pouch, and now we can finally hold more items. Now, not very many. And the thing, you still have the space for two bags here, and this is actually for a uh, weapon pouch which weapon pouches are really expensive, but they're purely for just holding weapons. So, um, and I don't have, um, I don't have a, another salvage thing, but, so I can sell this, and I can sell all these, nothing too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of my crafting materials here, especially, like, the armor, I mean, the iron, and things that I have a lot of. Or that I'll get the most of, I guess, is what I should say. And this. Yeah, that makes it cool. And then the rest of it I can just kind of put down here. Um, and collectibles I'll put over here. I'm just trying to get things kind of organized. But yeah, so this way we have more space in our inventory. I'll get another uh, flute for Gwen. I mean, hell, I got 65 gold. So, um, let's see. So, what to do today? Do I have... Do I have a flute? Yes, I do have a flute. Anyways, this has been Sam Utari playing Guild Wars. Sorry to cut this episode so short. Like I said, I really have things that I gotta do today. Otherwise, I would play more. Um, looking at our quests, I think next time we're gonna just run around and see what we can do. Obviously they want me to go talk to Mune, so I'll get that done. The Poison Devourer, we might return there. And then a gift for Althea, um, we might just go ahead and take care of those things um, before we continue, because what we need to do is we need to get all the quests for Reagan's Valley. Um, the Wayward Wizard's gonna take us, to, take us a little bit. Um, we still have to explore the Warrior uh, powers, the ranger powers, which is what we're going to do in the end, and also the elementalist powers, which we get all the way at the wizard's tower, so, and I forget what it's called, because it's not Foible's Fair, but it's something right by that area, so yeah, um, so we still have those powers to explore, and so we'll do a little bit of that next episode, but I kind of want to get some of these out of the way for you, um, first, 
before we start getting into the real serious stuff. And of course, we're not going to do our primary quests until all the Ascalon quests are finished, because once we complete the primary quest, we'll be thrown into post-searing, which is something we just don't want at the moment. So anyways, this has been Sam Utari playing Guild Wars. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed my last video showing you my main account on my kick-ass Mesmer and me playing with my BFF Ninel. If you've not already seen it, go ahead and go into my videos. Um, it's not really... Uh, it is in the Guild Wars uh, playthrough, but uh, it's in the playlist for the Guild Wars playthrough, but it's the, actually not part of the actual playthrough. It's just I wasn't really sure where to put it. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. It is kind of long, but I, I will assure you it's pretty cool. I put a lot of effort into that video. I'm pretty proud of it. Anyways, leave me a comment in the uh, comment section below and let me know what you want to see in these uh, episodes. Because the thing is, is I do have trouble kind of deciding what we should do today because I don't really know what you want to see. So go ahead in the comments below, let me know what you want to see, and I'll try and accommodate you in any way that I can. Go ahead and ask any questions you have about Guild Wars, and I'll try to answer them if you can't seem to find an answer online. Go ahead and hit like if you can't wait to see more of these videos. And last but not least, hit subscribe if you want to see how I'm, uh, like, what videos I'm putting up and when, etc, etc. Um, I would love, definitely love to hear from you, see you, have you subscribe to me, and also, lastly, connect with me online so you can check out my blog and see my gaming reviews and all the fun stuff I've been doing. Last but not least, have a nice day, everybody. And I will see you in the next video, which should be up on Monday. This is Sam Mutari out, and I'll talk to you guys later. Ciao.